Hello, my name is Farron Glenfield. I'm the Church of Ireland Bishop of Kilmore, Elfin and Arda. It's springtime and the daffodils are out in all their glory. The birds are singing, building their nests. The swallows are on their way from Africa. All signs of things coming to life. In Easter, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if we look all around, God has placed into the created order the principle of dying and rising. These daffodils will die back in May and June. They'll go back into their bulbs. And then after the harsh winter, when they're buried, they will rise again in the spring of 2022. And in Jesus Christ, God has taken this principle that he's written into creation and done an incredible thing. Jesus died to deal with our sin and he rose again so that we could live the life that God intends for us. So in these services which are coming to you over Easter and coming beyond Easter into spring and early summer, I do pray that you will be filled with the life of God as you recognize who Jesus is, the living one, our Savior and Lord. Do enjoy these services and God bless. Welcome to our Mother's Union Act of Worship. Today we are in Ashfield Church, part of the Coot Hill Group. And this church building is 225 years old. In fact, it was last year that we reached that milestone and our celebrations have been postponed because of the COVID restrictions. We gather to remember and reflect, to acknowledge and lament loss of all kinds over the past months. We gather to bring our thanks to God for his steadfast love and to affirm our hope for the future. The first Mother's Union branch in Kilmore Diocese was opened here in Ashfield in 1898. It was opened by Mrs Gertrude Clemens of Ashfield Lodge and the first meetings were held in Ashfield Lodge. She was an Englishwoman, the daughter of Canon David Markham, Rector of Orcasley in Essex. She was a close friend of Mary Sumner. She died on April 26, 1931 and her grave is here in Ashfield Churchyard. A centenary service held on April the 28th, 1998, was attended by Mrs. Catherine O'Huno, granddaughter of Mrs. Clemens. Ashfield and Cotill Mothers Union branches amalgamated in 1968. The Cotill Group banner was dedicated by Bishop Michael Mays on the 26th of September, 1996. It was presented by the Dean family of Kilishardine in memory of their mother. It depicts a mother reading the Bible surrounded by her 12 children. There were 12 children in the Dean family. Eternal God, we thank you for the commitment of Gertrude Clemens to the purpose of Mother's Union. And we thank you for the leadership and encouragement she provided. We pray that we will continue to enjoy each other's friendship and work together in love and encourage each other in hope and confidence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord is good, our refuge and deliverer. He cares for those who hope in him. We draw near to him in faith. God of hope, we come into your presence this day with confidence that you will meet us here where we are. Where there is sadness, bring joy. Where there is tiredness, bring refreshment. Where there is despair, bring a renewed sense of hope. Let this place be a sanctuary, a safe haven for us. 
a home for holy words and songs and prayers as we devote ourselves to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Ever present God, you walk with us through good times and bad, mountain top and valley deep. Your footsteps are guide, hands are support. Ever present God, you are close to us when life is smooth or rough. In wholeness and brokenness, your healing, our hope, your touch, our desire. Ever present God, bring comfort and peace and the warmth of your presence, and we shall fear no thing, for you are with us always. Amen. Now we confess our sins to God, our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent. Have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Old Testament reading is from Lamentations chapter 3, verses 20 to 26. I well remember my troubles, and my soul is downcast within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him and to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading is from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 39. That day when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was, in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Good morning, everybody. And firstly, can I say a, a big thank you for inviting me to be part of your Mother's Union Diocesan Festival service. Most of you will know me. My name is Alison Calvin, and I served in the parish of Kilachandra in Kilmore Diocese for ten and a half very happy years. I just moved here to Kilkeel uh, at the foot of the Mourns in County Down four weeks before lockdown. So not the best time to be beginning a ministry in a new place, but nevertheless, uh, uh, we, like you, are beginning to re-emerge from what has been COVID and are looking to how we can rebuild and, and move forward with faith, which is very much the theme of your diocesan service today. As we go to our first Bible reading this morning from Lamentations chapter 3, um, we're not quite sure who wrote Lamentations. It's widely assumed that it was Jeremiah, but there's actually no proof of that, although a lot of insight uh, would indicate that it could have been him. Certainly it was somebody who had been an eyewitness account of the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonians in, in 587. And that must have been an awful sight to behold when the Babylonians finally captured Jerusalem and, and burnt it to the ground. It's awful to see the destruction of something beautiful, isn't it? I remember when I was a very small child and, and we came home one night and as we were coming past my friend's house, who li they lived just up the road, they were standing out watching their house in flames. The children from that household came to spend the night at our house. Their house had burned down and they were left with absolutely nothing. I remember being deeply traumatised by that, even though it wasn't my house or my belongings. Here in the Mourne Mountains just this week, we've had a terrible fire. Unfortunately, it seems deliberately started. It spread throughout the mountains and has caused a great deal of damage to the natural habitat of much wildlife. It's such a shame to see such a beautiful area destroyed by fire. And I'm sure you too have seen those horrendous pictures from places like Syria, where towns and buildings and homes have been devastated. That's the picture that we have here in Lamentations. The writer starts the, the book by describing, can't get the page turned, by describing what that looked like. Here's what he says. How deserted lies the city, once so full of people, how like a widow is she who once was great among the nations. She who was queen among the provinces has now become a slave. Bitterly, she weeps at night and tears are upon her cheeks. He goes on to describe the utter devastation of children lying, starving in the streets. Mothers are even pushed to the limits of, of being tempted to eat their own children in order to su survive, such as the complete destruction and desolation of Jerusalem in those days. Now, as we consider our post-COVID world, perhaps our landscape is not quite so bleak as the one described in this book, but COVID certainly has had an impact on us. Some have lost loved ones. Some have been separated for long periods of time. Jobs and businesses have been affected. Precious time has been lost with family. Even our churches have been negatively affected. So in this present situation we find ourselves in, where do we find hope? How do we look towards a future with faith? Well, what does the author of this book of Lamentations do? Where does he find his hope? Firstly, he begins by, by saying, if only the nation had listened to God, if only the nation had listened to the voice of its prophets, if only they'd walked in the ways of God, maybe they could have been spared all this desolation. 
Reminds me of the story of a prisoner talking with his cellmate. And he said to him, Oh, if only I'd listened to my mother, I wouldn't have ended up in this situation. To which his mate asked him, Why, what did she say? And he said, I don't know, because I didn't listen. You see, the people of Israel, the people of Judah, they hadn't listened to God. They hadn't sought to walk according to his ways. And and so they've ended up in this utter desolation. The writer of the Lamentations, after he laments the current situation, he says, okay, but we get to verse 21, and this is where we see it begin to turn. This is where we see a little glimmer of hope because he looks up. And he says, despite all of this, yet I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. He calls something to mind. In other words, he chooses to remember. He chooses to reflect upon. Uh, And and this reflection brings him hope. What is it that he calls to mind? Well, he calls to mind the nature and, and the truth that he knows about God. And he says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. What does he reflect upon? What gives him hope? His knowledge of the mercy of God. In other words, mercy means God not giving us the punishment that we do deserve. He calls to mind the mercy of God, the love and the compassion of God, the faithfulness of God. He looks back and he remembers how God has been faithful in the past. And he says, Lord, if you've been faithful in the past, I can trust you to be faithful now and I can trust you to be faithful to us in the future. So his hope, his strength, his faith to rebuild is found in remembering who God is. I said to myself, the Lord is my portion. The Lord is enough, in other words. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those who hope in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the Lord, for the salvation of the Lord. See, this writer has learned to wait quietly. That means to put utter confidence, utter trust in the God, the only God who can save and who can deliver. And so he calls to the people who are listening or reading his words and he says, let us examine our ways and test them. Isn't that good advice for us all and for us as a nation? Let's examine our ways and test them. Have we been listening to God? Have we been walking in his ways? Let us examine our ways and test them and let us return to the Lord. Now, our New Testament reading uh, told that familiar story about Jesus in the boat with the disciples. It's a story that you know well, a a lovely picture of, of Jesus sleeping on the cushion as his disciples cross the lake at night with him. Now, the disciples in this story have got so much right. They're in the boat with Jesus. They're going where he's told them to go. They're doing their best to follow and obey and honor him. And still the storm comes. They're terrified. But again, they get it right because in their fear, where do they turn? Of course, they go to Jesus, they wake him and they say, look at this storm. And you see the storm that is huge to them, the storm that to them is threatening and overwhelming. Well, it only takes one command from Jesus for it all to be brought under control. Can you imagine how that must have felt in that boat as the boat is being tossed about from side to side and the wind is howling and and the waves are crashing and Jesus speaks and all is calm, all is still and there is utter peace. It must have been a surreal feeling for those disciples. And then Jesus asked them that question, have you still no faith? What did he mean by that question? Well, 
If we were to read the previous chapters of Mark's Gospel up to this point, we would see that the disciples have been there when Jesus has cast out demons. They've been there when he healed Peter's mother-in-law, when he healed the paralyzed man, when he healed the lepers, when he healed the man with the shriveled hand. And so perhaps Jesus is saying to them, listen, after all these things that you've seen, did you think this would be too hard for me? Did you think that I couldn't bring this under control? In other words, he's saying to them, call to mind what you've already seen. Let it give you courage for the now. And remember, too, in the future, that I am the same and what I've done in the past, I can do again. I often wonder in their later life when Jesus was already ascended back into heaven and those same disciples faced storms of many kinds, storms of persecution and and all sorts. I wonder, did they stop and think back to that night when Jesus calmed the storm? Did they call to mind all the things they'd seen him do? And did they think if he did it then, he can do it again? We just need to trust and have faith. And so for us, as we come to the end of our reflection this morning, where do we find faith? Where do we find strength? in our current circumstances? Where do we get hope for the future? Well, in the very same way as our writer of Lamentations and of the disciples in the boat, we look to Jesus. We lift up our eyes to God. We call to mind what we know to be true of him. There's two little songs that I love at the minute. The one says, All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. The other, and many of you will know it's one of my favourites, hymn number 18 from our hymn book. What a faithful God have I, faithful in every way. See, God has been faithful. Let's look back to how he has been faithful in the past. Let's remember that he's the same God who is faithful. His compassions are new every morning, that means today, and he always will be faithful to those who look to him. And now, if you need something, if you think, well, when I look back at my life, I'm not sure that I see the faithfulness of God, then look back to the one event in history that proves his absolute faithfulness, love, compassion, and mercy. Look to the cross, because that is the greatest proof that you could ever have that God is full of compassion, mercy, love, and faithfulness. God so loved the world that he gave his son His son who became an atoning sacrifice for our sins as he bore our sin on his body on the tree. That whosoever, you, me, whosoever believes, need not perish, but have eternal, everlasting life. You see, if God loved us that much, if he was that faithful, that he gave his son for us, then we can trust in his faithfulness today because he's promised, I will never leave you or forsake you. Lo, I am with you even unto the end of the age. He gives us his Holy Spirit to live in us, to strengthen us, to give us faith for today. And of course, with God, we have a bright, bright future too. He raised Jesus from the dead. So even if death were to take us, we know that if we are in Christ, then we too will experience that wonderful resurrection. Even though you die, yet will you live. I often say to older parishioners who are lamenting uh, that there's not much to look forward to. Uh, I always say the best for the Christian, for the believer in Jesus, the best is always still ahead. Because God has got good things for us every day. And then one day, he'll take us home to be with him. And that, as the Apostle Paul said, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. So where do we get our strength for today? In our faith in Jesus. And he will give us courage 
and he will give us the strength to begin to rebuild and reshape. And it might be different than it was before, but as long as we're doing it according to his will and his way, it will be good and he will bless it. So thank you for sharing uh, or allowing me to share this time with you. And I I do pray that you will all know the grace and strength of, of God in your lives. And remember the last line of that hymn, strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. That is our God. He gives us strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Great is his faithfulness. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help each of us to call to mind what we know from your word to be true about you, and that you would teach us to place our trust and our faith firmly in you, and in that faith, in you, to find our strength for today and our bright hope for tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. The Collect for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. The Collects for Morning Prayer O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. And in all things, guide us to know and do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favour and further us with your continual help that in all our works begun, continued and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name and finally, by your mercy, attain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The intercessions will be led by members of the Mother's Union. Let us pray. God of compassion, God with us, be with us in these times of uncertainty. Break into our lives, rekindle our hope and breathe love into our communities. That we might find new ways of supporting and upholding one another. Bearing witness to your inclusive love of family, friend, neighbour and stranger alike. May our love for those most vulnerable in our community become a beacon of hope for all. In faith, hope and love, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Gracious God, whose love and kindness has no limits, teach us afresh the way of Christ. Where we have felt discouraged, renew us through signs of hope. Where we have been tempted to give up, grant us strength and faith to face the day. Where we have grown anxious about the future, give us courage to plant the seeds of tomorrow in acts of radical love today. Renew us by your spirit and set us free to serve you so that the whole of creation may rejoice in your name. Amen. We will walk in hope and confidence, trusting each other, loving each other. And together we will rebuild the hope and confidence of families and communities everywhere. All is reaching forward as God's hands and feet and reflecting a life filled with purpose and meaning, grace and love, peace and joy. In our wave of prayer, we give thanks for all the members across the world 
who share the love of God through their lives and faithful actions. We pray especially for Aru in DR Congo, Kigzi in Uganda, Ikindu in Nigeria, Ho in, Ga in Ghana and York in England. Loving Lord, we thank you for your love so freely given to us all. We pray for families around the world. Bless the work of the Mother's Union as we seek to share your love through the encouragement, strengthening and support of marriage and family life. Empowered by your spirit, may we be united in prayer and worship and in love and service. Reach out as your hands across the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we draw our prayers together as we join in the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May is a marvellous month. There is so much in prospect for this time of year. And normally in the Mother's Union we have at least two festival services throughout the diocese. But this service today has come to you where we are now in lockdown. And we're very grateful to all of those who have participated in this service and made it a very special occasion. To Richard Waller, the Dawson uh, Mother's Union Chaplain, to David Moses, um, who led the service from Ashfield, uh, to Hazel Spears, the Dawson President, uh, who's given a little report, and to all the members of the Mother's Union who led, who prayed, and who read. And to Alison Calvin, uh, one of our own, as it were, who's now in the Diocese of Dan and Dromore in Kilkeel in the Moor Mountains. And so as we draw this service together, let's pray. And so we pray. We are walking the Emmaus Road now, moving from where we have been to where life is leading us. No matter how we experience or interpret what is happening now and what lies ahead, no matter how we feel on a given day, what can we be assured of is this, that Jesus Christ is with us and in him we hope for better days and pray for that day to come. But for now, we are walking on the road Take heart, we do not walk alone. And so may the God of all hope fill us with joy and peace in believing, so that by the Holy Spirit we might abound in hope. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us on this festival day and always. Amen. Who would have thought back in May 2020, when we had our first ever online festival service, that we still wouldn't be able to meet together in a church building for this year's service? But hasn't modern technology been a real blessing, with online events reaching out to greater numbers of people? I hope you've enjoyed today's time of worship. My thanks to everyone who has taken part and to all those who have been involved behind the scenes. As we look ahead with confidence, may the God of hope 
fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.